We're here at Copper Mountain, an open pit copper mine in British Columbia, Canada. Unquestionably the most staggering location we've ever filmed in. And we're here to see that. Without a doubt, the biggest electric vehicle we have ever seen, ever. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. Before we go and look at these extraordinary machines, I think it's worth talking about why we're here. And really, you know, whenever we talk about the clean energy transition, it always sparks a debate about where do the raw materials and the critical minerals that are used to make EVs and wind turbines and solar panels, where do they all come from? And as the demand for nickel and lithium and copper and all the other core battery ingredients increases, it's good to ask questions in order to hold supply chains to account and make sure that our clean energy transition technologies have as little impact on the environment and communities that surround them. But as we ask those questions, there are three really important points to remember here. One, it's not just EVs that contain critical minerals. Think about the device that you're watching this episode on. That will be jam packed with the same sorts of critical minerals as you find in EVs. Two, critical minerals can be recycled. And as we ramp up recycling efforts, that should diminish the requirement or the demand for primary raw materials. And three, mining can be decarbonized. And if we do, the annual emissions from extracting the materials required for the clean energy transition will be just 2% of those generated from extracting the same amount of coal, oil and gas that we do today. But despite those fractions, mining is a hard to abate industry. We're talking huge energy demand, lugging heavy loads uphill, smashing rocks, remote off-grid locations, expensive equipment, dust and dirt, and continuous operation. Not easy conditions for electrification. But we love a challenge, and so too does Hud Bay Minerals, whose Komatsu 830 E5 electric haul trucks have already slashed emissions by 30% here at Copper Mountain. Well, the mining uh, haulage fleet at Copper Mountain needs to operate continuously. Um, so 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, our haul truck operators work a 12 hour shift starting at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and, and, and um, move on to uh, six in the morning. Um, we do this to scale our, our, our production and, and, and to become an efficient operation. Um, with that, the fleet, requires that uh, 45,000 tons per day is moved to the crusher, uh, which requires a truck every seven minutes. There are currently seven of these electric haul trucks operating here at Copper Mountain with a plan to have four more in the very near future. But one of the things that's so difficult to describe is just how enormous these are. But to give you some perspective, this wheel alone weighs 23 tons and it can haul a total of 230 tonnes. But what's even more astonishing is that that's pretty small by mining standards. There are in fact a couple of fully electric prototypes of mining vehicles of a similar size that are taking place across the world. Fortescue Mining, for example, has one with a 1.4 megawatt hour battery. But this has taken a slightly different approach. This in fact uses a pantograph, so the arms come up and create contact with an overhead wire delivering electrical power directly into the vehicle. And that actually isn't really a new technology. We've had pantographs since around the 1800s. There is a very, very small caveat here and something that we don't normally cover on the Fully Charged Show. This isn't fully electric. It does have a little bit of diesel, but just to tell you how little diesel, the non-electric version uses 34 litres of diesel per kilometre. This one uses 0.8 litres of diesel per kilometre. And better than that, when it's running on the electric lines, it can go at twice the speed. But just how impressive really is saving 33.2 litres of diesel per kilometre? Well, the non-electric trucks use the same amount of fuel as 653 average diesel cars driving the same distance whilst the pantograph connected ones are equivalent to just 15. Or in other words, the diesel consumption of one hauler is equivalent to that used by 42 e-trolley trucks. We've just seen an electric truck go past at the same time as a diesel one, and you'd have seen immediately that the diesel one was going at 12 kilometers an hour compared to the electric one's 24 kilometers an hour. And that difference in speed is enabled by the fact that it's running electrically and it can be so much more efficient, meaning that this the operations here can be so much more efficient. 
And factors like that contribute to the fact that the payback period of these projects is as little as two to five years. And just seeing them operate side by side, the diesel one feels like this sort of big hauling machine struggling to get up the hill, whereas the electric one sort of glides seamlessly like some sort of agile athlete. Now, it is so hard to capture just the sheer size of the things that we're seeing here. They're hauling 230 metric tons. That is mind-bogglingly massive. And it's all being enabled by this 12 megawatts of power that can be delivered over these pantograph lines. There are four trucks that can operate at any one time across this one kilometre stretch, meaning that each is receiving a peak power of three megawatts. This is vast, vast quantities of electricity. And so they have had to work very, very closely with uh, the utility here, BC Hydro, to make sure they can get that upgrade to the grid. And that's what makes this even more remarkable is the fact that BC Hydro is an exceptionally clean grid. It's about 95% powered by renewable electricity, meaning that the operations here then become that much cleaner as well. So the upgrades to the transmission line um, to supply Copper Mountain with the needed power uh, to implement our low carbon electrification program uh, have happened over uh, several years and required an extensive amount of planning and working in, in, in a cooperation with BC Hydro. We call them system impact studies. So we have uh, moved the power supply uh, from 65 megawatts to 100 megawatts uh, in the last four years. One of the things that makes electrifying mining really, really challenging is that number one, mines are often in like pretty remote locations. So getting power to those mines in the first place is pretty challenging. And secondly, you're gonna be drilling and, and digging in various different locations across the whole site. So you need to be able to transport that power. And behind me here is one of the solutions that Hub Bay Minerals and uh, Copper Mountain Mine have come up with. So 25 kilovolts comes in on that line. It's then got these portable substations that step down the voltage into these extremely long, basically like extension cables that are running at 7,200 volts and then powering the drilling machines that are going on in that pit over there. And that is how they can make electricity that much more transportable. Portable substations and massive cables means that it's not just the haulers that run on electrons. Lots of other mining equipment, such as the giant shovels, are also powered with electricity. These are all major steps in Hub Bay Minerals' road to net zero. You know, at Copper Mountain Mine, we are implementing our, our GHG reduction strategy. So first is uh, electrification of the loading equipment. So uh, we ha have two Komatsu PC8000 electric shovels. I currently stood on top of a brand new electric hydraulic shovel and it's been built here on site part by part over the past 35 days. We have uh, three electric rotary blast hole drills operating in the pit, which is one of the first phases of the production. And it's plugged in. It's plugged into a 7,200 volt cable, which you can see at the back. But interestingly, this is not new technology. They've actually had this one since 2012 and there have been electric rotary blast drills for much longer than that. So it's remarkable. They've been committed to this electric journey for really quite some time. The mining industry in Canada employs over 600,000 people. And according to Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, we need 330 new mines in order to avoid a critical mineral shortage. And that's still assuming the best case scenario of recycling those critical minerals. And given the number of incentives that exist to diversify that supply chain, that amount of mining in Canada is only set to increase. And thankfully, there are loads of efforts to decarbonize mining. Komatsu, who we've seen here today, are working on 300 tonne and 400 tonne electric trucks. They are enormous and require phenomenal amounts of power. No easy challenge. New Afton Mine has electric vehicles and Snow Lake Lithium here in Canada also plans to be fully electric. It's always uh, you know, critical that technology advancements are considered early on in the process. And uh, you know, I think in British Columbia, um, both industry and, and, and government agencies and groups like BC Hydro are active uh, to look and, uh, for opportunities to provide incentives to, to, to go with a low carbon solution uh, rather than a carbon emitting source because we're fortunate enough here to have uh, renewable hydroelectricity. But there is still a big elephant in the room. As even if a mine's environmental impact assessment was the most thorough in the world, and even if all the operations were decarbonized, 
and we recycled every Second Life battery and each of the 50 million tons of electronic waste generated each year to reduce the amount of mining needed in the first place, we still need mining and it will take materials out of the ground, often in areas of cultural significance to indigenous communities, many of whom believe that people should be stewards of the natural world. As we ramp up mining for the clean energy transition, engagement, consultation and collaboration with the local community to the absolute highest standard is completely paramount. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. The materials that are mined for the clean energy transition will be used to generate, store and use clean energy until they're recycled and regenerated. It's an inherently much more circular system than burning the billions of tonnes and barrels of fossil fuels that we do today. But decarbonising this hard to abate industry takes graft and vision and commitment. And it's been incredible to see some of the steps that Hub Bay Minerals Copper Mountain are taking along this decarbonisation journey.